You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for hitting that play button. This is another episode of the Dave Bullis Podcast. Before we get to today's episode, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has been using my Amazon affiliate link. I also just posted up an eBay affiliate link. Uh, with both of those, you just click on the link, you shop as normal, and I get a percentage of whatever you buy because I directed you to that site. Uh, and again, it really does help out the podcast. So again, thank you. Shout out to uh, Michael K. Snyder for winning our contest from last week. Uh, he will be getting a copy of TV Writing On Demand. And again, if you want to see me run more contests, uh, you know, so far we've given away a year of Masterclass. We've given away this book. We've given away movies. Uh, you know, is there any other contests that you'd like to see me run? Uh, just let me know. And then we'll, we'll try to get that done because it seems to be a popular theme, especially when I give away Masterclass, the year of Masterclass. That seemed to be a uh, pretty popular one. But if there's anything else you'd like me to, to give away, please let me know and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, also, some of you have uh, saw the, the post I made where I was meeting with Paul, the director of cinematography here in the Philly area, uh, about you know pitching him some ideas about something that we could shoot here in the Philly area in the next coming months. And that went well. And some of you have reached out and asked, you know, what is it, you know, uh, what, what, what is it going to be, you know, this and that. Uh, so it's just going to be a fake trailer project. Uh, it's not going to be a short film, not going to be a feature film, uh, not going to be another TV pilot, just a, a fun fake trailer. Uh, I just want to get do something creative again. And I think that's the right way to go. Something we can shoot in a weekend where it's not going to kill everybody. <laughs> it's not going to be like 18 hour days. It's just going to be something, you know, that, that is not only fun and out there, but it help, it, it will help get some eyeballs on, um, you know, not only this podcast, even though it's a lot of ears, but still, you know, and, uh, it's just something I want to get to directing something again. It's been far too long, you know, and, and you, you listeners to this, you know, I got burned out doing it. Uh, right around 2012, 2013, and I want to get back into it and directing something And as I continue writing more and more and more. But if you want to help out with this project, uh, I will need some help. Uh, just reach out to me, dave at davebullis.com, and in the subject line, write fake movie trailer. And I will, you know, I'm looking for some crew roles. I will be looking for actors soon enough. And I, I will start to talk more openly about what the project is as we get closer to it. But if you're interested in helping out, uh, there's, you know, I, I want to make sure I have everyone kind of lined up. And again, it's just going to be shut over a weekend here in Philly. And I can tell you more information if you want to email me. And um, I, trust me, it, it'll be it'll be fun. Everyone who's ever worked on my project has said two things. I put together a really awesome team and it's always fun. Uh, even when tempers are flaring, it's fun. But <laughs> but there'll be no tempers flaring on this one. I I, I can promise you that it's just going to be. I'm going to put together a right mixture of personalities, and I I always put together a good team, and uh, I always you know uh, make sure that everybody is you know has safe, feels welcome. So it'll it'll be a fun time. And uh, again, Dave at DaveBullis dot com, and uh, put just put fake trailer project in the in the subject line so I can sort of you know start start to uh, you know. Uh, archive this stuff or, or organize this stuff as I was trying to say. So again, thank you. And uh, on to today's episode, I chat with a filmmaker who actually lives two lives, uh, which I think all of us do because, you know, in the day we work a, a day job and then we make films on the weekends or at night or wherever we can until we can make uh, movies full time. You know, it's kind of like a, a side gig or a side hustle or, or a weekend warrior type thing. So Usually, if you're like me, you kind of hide that side. You kind of make, you know, I have two LinkedIn's, I have two different Twitters, etc. Because you don't want them to bleed into each other because usually it doesn't end well. Uh, my next guest, he actually constantly just goes out and says, yeah, I make films on the weekends. Yeah, I was in the paper and I also work at this company. So <laughs> he's kind of like the Iron Man. He, he, you know, he's just at the end. He's like, oh, by the way, I'm Iron Man. Uh, I do all this stuff. And uh, if you don't like it, whatever. But uh, But he's embraced it and it's worked very well for him. Uh, we're we're going to talk about his new movie called Twin Cities about living a double life, and we're going to talk about filmmaking and winning writing contests and being flown out to LA, and and he saw the frustration not being able to make his own movies because these guys weren't going to make it. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Uh, really cool interview. So without further ado, this is episode two ten with guest David Ash. Yeah, 
kind of long story short, I did, I did well enough one of these crew contests that they brought me out to L.A. to kind of do the L.A. thing and meet with some producers and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I really realized from that experience that basically there's no way in hell they're ever going to make my movie. Um, <laughs> and uh, that became pretty apparent. Not that they didn't like it. It just wasn't the kind of stuff that they were interested in. So um, from there, you know, pretty much on the flight home from, from L.A., I decided I wanted to just learn how to make films so that they actually got made rather than just stacking up on my, my shelf here. So, um, so we have a IFP, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not. It's an a independent uh, feature project, which is a kind of a local thing here in the Twin Cities for filmmaking and photography. And I started taking a lot of classes there, um, you know, everything you can take in filmmaking, uh, screenwriting, uh, directing, you know, editing, lighting, audio, anything they would provide, I would, I would take it. And uh, just kind of learned it that way. And then, you know, got into one of the classes. I think it was um, Intro to Film Production. And in the class, we actually had to make a, a short film. So I made a short film in the class just using other students in the class. Uh, we shot it in about two and a half hours. Uh, it cost about 15 bucks to make it. And it actually got to some festivals and, you know, uh, played in, in a few of these just not just here, but, uh, you know, internationally. And um, that was really kind of the the spark for the whole thing. So after that, um, the actually the guy that was teaching that class um, asked me if I wanted to keep making films. I'm like, yeah, of course I do. So he was actually also the facilities director of the IFP so we could get our equipment for free. So from there, we just started making short films. I think we made five or six in about a year. Um, this is now probably 11, 12 years ago. Uh, those did pretty well, gotten some fast and such. And then, um, you know, got a little tired of just making short films. And then I made my first feature about 10 years ago. Uh, it was a mockumentary called Love a Documentary. And we made the whole thing for 800 bucks. Um, but, you know, I think it looks like a thousand dollar film, if you ask me. Um, but, uh, you know, Definitely uh, not high budget, but uh, that actually got some fuss as well. And, you know, from there, I've made two, two more, much more bigger budget uh, films since then. But that was really the, the start of the whole thing. So you, you mentioned you have a degree in business administration, uh, as do I. Uh, so it's kind wow. of it's kind of ironic because you and I see that's one of the reasons I want to talk to you because you and I have okay. a very similar path uh, yeah. because I, I have a degree in business administration. I thought about going for an MBA and yeah. then I said, what the hell am I thinking? And, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. just, and uh, I, I, I decided uh, I, you know, uh, I, I used to work at a college and they were going to offer me okay. a free master's and I, I, I decided not to, to go that route. Um, and, and it wasn't the MBA. There's a couple different options. And I thought, I, I don't feel like going for two more years of school for a degree that I, I, I just don't know if I'm going to fully use. Um, right. so, you know, but, but it was, it was very similar though. Um, cause during college, I, I realized I, that I didn't want to really do go into business or anything like that. So it's, you know, it's just kind of ironic because, you know, after you got that business degree, you know, and, and you, you know, you, you mentioned, um, that you started taking some screenwriting courses. We you know were, were these like online seminars. No, there's, there's, a, uh, there's a place called the – it's actually a literary loft. It's a place that offers you just writing classes of all kind. And one was a screenwriting class. It was at night, you know, once a week for probably uh, two months. It wasn't anything huge. And that was really the only screenwriting class I had. But it was – it really helped to kind of understand the mechanics of the of film, you know, writing works and such. So that was, that was how I got started in screenwriting uh, as far as the educational part of it. So, so when you did take that course, you know, what, what, like, what were some of the things that really, you know, stood out for, for, uh, for you for taking that course? Um, you know, I think the first thing was, you know, a, screen, a screenplay shouldn't be 400 pages. I think that was a good learning, um, you know, because I was just writing and writing and writing and, and the teacher was like, you know, you got to <laughs> pare this thing down quite a bit. Um, you can't have, a, a, you know, 50 pages of just dialogue in a row. It was just kind of learning film language. Um, and, you know, three act structure, all that kind of good stuff. So, um, I was really a babe in the woods before I took that class. And then I've kind of learned more as I've done it since then, but, um, it was really just the basics and then, you know, uh, earning your, uh, you know, your ending, that kind of thing. I was kind of a big thing with that instructor. Um, but, uh, that was really just the, the start of, it. I think I've, I've learned a lot since then just doing the, the screenwriting, the filmmaking, but that was uh, the first time I actually had understood you couldn't just write four or 500 pages and call that a, a film, right? 
Yeah, it, it, and definitely. And just to go along with that, it's also about you know writing a scene, what makes a scene, putting all those together, actually making sure the screenplay actually you know works, and it's not just basically a collection of you know someone's day as they sort of just go through the. Uh, the minutia, uh, there had you know uh, is I mean because you you knew writing going into this, so you, I'm sure you knew about tension and building characters already, right? Yeah, but yeah, I mean not not in the form of filmmaking though. I, I kind of you know I knew it from more the literary side of things, and um, you know the the biggest thing just was for me was learning that you know you can do in film with you know three or four lines and the right shots what you you know would normally do in three or four pages in a book, for example, and just paring everything down to, and something I'm still learning, I'll you know, pare everything down to just exactly what you need, nothing more. So that takes a long time to learn if you're not used to that. And you want to just kind of expound on everything ad nauseum, which I learned very quickly is not the way to go about it. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, you know, and, and what I was just getting at was, you know, just about coming to building characters, you know, like character right. descriptions and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you can't put in like uh, Nescott Fitz, Fitzgerald prose where, you know, he describes the curtains or whatever, uh, you know, for, right, for a couple, right. couple pages. But, you know, it, it's all about com- economy of words. Um, so, so you know, after it was all over, did you actually have a, a you know, a 90 or 100 page screenplay? Yeah, I think I got it down to maybe one twenty, one thirty. Um, you know, and that was the script I used to to kind of get into the contest and and such. And you know, some of those contests, if you do well enough, they give you like free feedback. So that was a a good learning as well. And you know, for me, the the biggest thing that helped me with screenwriting was just having to actually make the the damn things myself, right? Because then you realize if you're making these kind of amateur mistakes, once you get on the set, you know, it's your responsibility to make it into a film. And you learn very quickly, you know, when you're directing what you're what you're writing, that the script has to be something that's directable. So that just kind of diving in and starting to make films after I had, you know, just only written a, a few scripts was definitely the best education I had, uh, you know, in my whole career was just going ahead and, and doing it and getting progressively better at um, understanding what a script should should do and how it should look in terms of um you know, building scenes and such. And you can't replace just having to do it yourself. I think any kind of film, film school or, or class. Um, so that's when, you know, my biggest advice to filmmakers and folks wanting to filmmake is always, you know, don't, don't necessarily go to film school, just, you know, start making a film, even if it's going to suck and it, it will suck. You know, the, the first thing will definitely suck. Uh, but you have to just kind of learn by doing, otherwise, you know, you're not going to quite internalize what you need to internalize in terms of how it's actually done. Yeah, it's kind of like what Robert Rodriguez says. Uh, you know, basically, you have like a bunch of bad movies in you, in you, and you have to get them yep. out as soon as possible. Absolutely true. Yeah, I, I still have a few I probably haven't gotten out yet, but uh, <laughs> uh, we're getting there. You know, depending on who you talk to, I think we've we've gotten most of them out. Yeah, I, I found the key is is to. Um, just when you're first starting out, especially is to aim low. And what I mean by that is don't say like, Hey, listen, I'm going to go out this weekend. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot a a short film for 10 grand and we're going to have blood and squibs and, you know, blanks and everything else. And we need it. I mean, I think that's where just a lot of filmmakers tend to shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I've, I've said that before in similar kind of interviews and panels about, you know, you want, if you're having to make what you write, you realize very quickly that you have to write to what you can make, right? You have to write something you can actually shoot. And I, you know, I, I learned that pretty early on. I, I made a short film. I want to get into it, but it was just a effing nightmare because I, I fell in love with the script and then trying to make it became just a, a vortex of pain and agony for everyone involved for a very long time. And I was like, you know, I'm never again going to write a script that I can't actually make very, you know, um, reasonably underneath the budget that I've got. Um, otherwise it's just pointless and just leads to a lot of frustration and people hating it. Yeah, it, <laughs> that's very true. But I think we all have those stories, you know, Dave, I, I think we all have those stories where we, we tried to, sh- to do something a little too much too quickly and it ended up, you know, we kind of brought some people down with us. Um, yeah. I, I, I made a short film one time that literally everything that could go wrong went wrong. Yeah. And uh, finally, we were like, this was after the whole day, everything was going wrong, right? 
And we had to go outside to shoot this one scene. And I thought, hey, listen, you know what? This can't go wrong, right? This cannot go wrong. Dave, yeah. I shit you not. It starts pouring rain like you nice. wouldn't believe. And I said to myself, I go, this this can't be happening. Like, I, <laughs> I, have, I have to be in bed dreaming that this is all just happening and, yeah. I, and I'm going to wake up. But no, it, it, it's, it, it was real life, unfortunately. And I just I, – I ended up uh, – Shortly then after that, the uh, director of cinematography actually just like vanished, and I couldn't find yeah, him. Yeah. And uh, I was like, "What the hell?" And so I, I, I and uh, just to, you know, just to surmise that whole story, I, I actually met him uh, or, or, or reconnected with him probably a few years ago. And I actually asked him, I said, "Did yeah. I do something? Was it that day that did it?" And he goes, "Well, that day was bad." He goes, "But the whole, but but, but he's like the whole reason was, and there, there was a whole other reason that was going on in his personal life that thankfully had nothing okay. to do with me." And I was like, "Oh, thank okay. God! I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be responsible for this guy quitting film." Yeah, well, that's uh, good that you talked to him. Otherwise, you'd uh, your whole life thought I hated you. So that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I, you, you mentioned your short film that that when everything went wrong, and you know, again, I, I think we all have those, and. So as you um, you know started to go through you know uh, deciding to make you know more films, you know you worked a day job at the same time. Yeah, I always have. Um, that's that's kind of uh, I think the unique thing about, about what I do is that um, um, yeah I, I I didn't just you know go into writing after I got the MBA. I actually went into business, and I this is probably twenty years ago. Um, you know, that I graduated from grad school and. Um, been in corporate finance ever since. So yeah, I'm currently a um, exec at uh, Ecolab here in St. Paul, and you know that's a pretty involving gig. Um, you know, probably 50, 60 hours a week on that side of things. I've got um, four kids, <laughs> uh, ages 13 through 17. Um, that is um, a little consuming, um, pretty much all the time. And then yeah, and then doing the film stuff on top of that. So it's really been. Um, you know, uh, just trying to find a way to do it and just doing it. You know, it's, there's no real easy explanation for, you know, making six short films and three features in the last 13 years other than just willing yourself to do it. Cause it's, um, you, you gotta love it or you won't, you won't do it. I guess is the easiest thing I'd say, but it's, um, it's not for what I, but I think I am a pretty good example of, you know, if you want to make a film, get into filmmaking, you know, I mentioned some of the budgets that I worked on were pretty much peanuts and you really don't have um, an excuse for at least not trying it given the, the way the technology is now and the, how you can make a film for cheap. And you just kind of do it when you have time. And, um, you know, I think um, if nothing else, my story is something that uh, hopefully can inspire folks to just, you know, not say I can't do this because I've, I've got a day job and I've got a family and I've got everything else in my life because, um, you know, if I would have waited for that stuff to, to not be around, I would never have made a film. So uh, I'm glad I've done it. It's kind of exhausting uh, sometimes, but it's also gives you energy because it makes you, you know, want to get up and, and keep keep pushing at it. So um, um, I want to keep doing it. You know, it's, it's something I love to do. So uh, I wanted to ask what, when – so does it ever come back? Does it ever sort of, so what I mean by that is do, do, do people ever like search for you online and they'll say, Hey Dave, is this you? Uh, or something like that where you're kind yeah. of like, well, uh, cause at work, I imagine that happens. Cause I mean, imagine people are, cause you, you know, you're the, the, the treasury director and I imagine you probably, you know, people look you up on, on LinkedIn or what right. have you. And I'm sure they're probably like, Hey Dave, is this you in the local paper or whatever? <laughs> yeah, it, it happens a lot. I mean, um, it it really started happening last fall. We did our my um, most recent feature, Twin Cities, actually um, had its local premiere here in October. And um, as part of that, there was big feature stories in both the the Minneapolis paper as well as, well as the St. Paul paper in consecutive Sundays. Um, and that kind of reaches pretty much everybody in the state that reads, you know. So there was a lot of that, you know, at, at work on Monday, like, wow, I didn't know you did this because I don't talk about it at work and I don't really, uh, it's not something that a lot of folks are, it doesn't, doesn't come up in a lot of meetings about finance and accounting. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, folks definitely at that point were, were you know, very supportive and very interested, um, but also very shocked that I was doing this on the side in addition to, you know, being a, a treasury director for free collab. So it's uh most people think it's great. Some people are just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? <laughs> you know? 
but uh, yeah. overall, most positive. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I was expecting that a lot of people would be like, "Oh, hey, Dave, you know, why are you doing this and this?" Yeah. Uh, or maybe even saying, "Because I mean, that that's happened to it, to a lot of different people on this podcast where they've worked a day job and uh, yeah. you know they worked at the, they were like, Is it, you know, what what the hell?" Um, but uh, did anybody ever come up to you and like pitch like, "Hey, you know, I, I have a I have a friend or daughter or cousin that wants to be in movies." Yeah, I mean, I I get that more like when I do some panels now and then. I always have one personal kind of sheepishly walk up to me. I had one not too long ago, and it was her husband always wanted to write a screenplay, and we meet with him and you know <laughs> basically be his mentor. I I I don't talk to him. I'm not going to um, you know uh, I'm going to uh, readjust my life for for his film career. But hey, that's um that's something that's pretty common. Uh, there and then at, at work, it's more like, Hey, I, I once knew a person that wrote a book and that's pretty cool too. And, you know, there's not many filmmakers in corporate finance. I would just say as a rule, but everyone knows somebody that does something sort of similar and they want to talk to you about it, which I think is great, you know, but, um, yeah, I've had that experience quite a bit actually. <laughs> So have you ever actually met with somebody? So if somebody has ever requested it, like, Hey Dave, will you just meet my husband, wife or whatever? Have uh, you ever, ever actually sat down and met somebody? Um, probably not. I probably always figure out a way out of it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, nothing's coming to mind. I, I, I'll have a drink with somebody like after a film panel and, and that kind of thing. And, but nothing like formal, like, um, Hey, please show me how to do what you've been doing. But I'm always, I usually just get them, send them some links to some stuff and, and, uh, you know, get them in contact with the IFP here, which is a great place. Like I got started to get started and, throw them that way because they've got all the classes there to, to get involved and, and all that. But, um, yeah, I don't generally do a lot of one-to-one mentoring, I guess I'd say. Yeah. Cause I, I've noticed that comes up a lot too, is the whole like, Hey, would you mind meeting somebody? Um, I, I agreed to it one time and I think the, the person I met was, had a different idea of what screenwriting was or is. I, basically, I just started talking about screenwriting theory. I said, you know, what what are your questions? What do you have? What do you want to know? And uh, I did this for a friend. Uh, you know, this is kind of like a a professional acquaintance slash kind of sort of a friend, if you know what I mean. And I and I met with her um, and uh, went with her daughter. And I, her daughter, I think, was just kind of a little taken aback and didn't really have any questions i think she was kind of expecting me to like hey here's the key to all of this and this is what unlocks all the doors right yeah <laughs> that's what folks dylan and i've talked to think as well is that you can just kind of like um to the extent i've talked to folks but when i do it's generally like you know what you know send me an email with how you did this right and it's like well it kind of takes 12 <laughs> 14 years of work to kind of get even to where i'm at which is not exactly you know um, big budgets, big budget land. But, um, yeah, I, it's folks think it's just something you can just kind of write down on a piece of paper and give to somebody, you know? Yes. And, and, uh, I, I once was at a writing, uh, a, a, a seminar slash pitch, pitch event and this friend, mutual friend of mine, you know, came, walked up to me and, and said to me, uh, you know, Hey Dave, I want you to meet somebody. And this guy, he, he, he was wanting to get into screenwriting and every question was about basically money. It was like, do they still give people million dollar contracts? This and that? I'm like, what do you care? You haven't written anything. Like, they could give them ten yeah. billion dollars. What does it matter to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. Um, the good thing to know about filmmaking is like, yeah, I think about half percent actually make a pretty good living at it, and the other ninety nine point five are just you know doing it because they love it, honestly. And most folks don't realize that, you know, they watch the Oscars like a few days ago and they think that you're making films, you must be rolling and uh, rolling in it. It's pretty much the opposite. You just have to do it and love it. And hopefully something comes through at some point. But otherwise, you know, I I haven't made a ton of money and I'm, I'm happy with what I've done. So, I, you know, that's usually the end result of this kind of stuff. Yeah, right. Uh, and so, so just continue on with your, with your journey, you know, yep. a, after you, uh, you know, we were, t- we, before we get to t- Twin Cities, you know, uh, I just want to yep. ask, uh, you know, about any of the other short films, you know, before we talk about Twin Cities, is there anything else that, that sort of really like you wanted to, to, to sort of like talk about or discuss to focus on just because, you know, usually the short films, as, as you know, Dave, are kind of like the setup for a feature film. Yeah, it's a great way to get started. I would definitely recommend doing shorts. I, I've known some filmmakers that just go directly into features, and I, I don't think that's the way to go. I mean, 
Uh, a lot of these shorts were five to 10 minutes. Um, you know, some of them were like 50 bucks. <laughs> um, but, you know, they all played at small to medium sized festivals, uh, which is great. Um, but I would definitely go that route. I think I would have not probably done any differently than I, I did it if I had to do it over again, which was make five, five or six shorts and then kind of get your, your voice uh, and what you want to do with film dialed in before you tackle a feature. So, um, you know, I would say, you know, do that and then put it online. You know, you're, you're not going to find a more ruthless um, audience than putting something on YouTube. So that's a good indoctrination into, um, you know, film criticism for you because uh, the comments there will, um, if you can, if you can stomach that, then you can probably stomach like making a feature film because that's uh, that's a great uh, proving ground. I think is getting it on YouTube and getting some clicks. Um, we did have one that went pretty viral, a couple hundred thousand, I think, um, pretty quickly, and it was very politically oriented. And that's one thing I learned about, you know, uh, that kind of, um, you know, uh, getting short films out there is if it's politically oriented that it seems that folks are really ready to jump in on one side or the other on it. And that was definitely the most, um, uh, the biggest short film we had was, was what had a pretty, pretty hard liberal bent to it. And you could get all of the, uh, all the Trump Trumpsters and, and such out of the woodwork to really, you know, share it with their friends because they hated so much or vice versa. And, uh, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you, if you want clicks, make it politically oriented on one side or the other. And, and that's kind of the, the milieu right now and online is political stuff that folks just want to uh, either attack it vociferously and send it to their friends who they hate it or send it to their friends who they love it. But that was my experience with short film making was that uh, we made some films I thought were much better, but uh, they didn't have anywhere near the traction as that. And that was the uh, Obamacare website explanation, right? No, it was actually not that one. That one, that one was out there too, but um, it was about, um, it was uh, about a father talking to a son and the father was very hardcore right wing and the son was uh, very liberal and kind of setting him straight as they went along the, the, the path there. And um, we did it for uh, actually a political action group called uh, Live Liberal. And um, they asked us to make the short film. It's myself and this other guy that uh, I mentioned that got me into filmmaking. And we did it just for them and then just kind of took off from there. But, um, yeah, the Obama thing was also pretty pl political, but uh, – this one was very um, at a very defined point of view, which really kind of set some folks off, which was which was fine with me. <laughs> I mean, you, well, well, you're you're at least invoking some kind of emotion, right? And, that, yeah, and that's yeah. what we're after, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you know, with, with the Obamacare website explanation, I, I haven't actually seen that, and I actually saw that, and I was like, did he make a video for Ob the Obamacare website? Because I. No, you know, no, it's possible. No. But then, you know, I, I imagine it was probably, you know, like a, a parody video. Yeah, that was basically that was going back a, a few years. That was when Obama, the website, if you recall, didn't exactly set the world on fire and they had a, a ton of uh, problems with it. So he had this really, I'm kind of Obama fan. It was very earnest kind of Rose Garden um, explanation for all the things that had gone wrong with it. And why that was okay, and it was still going to be great. And it, what I did was I subtitled that with what he was actually trying to say, um, which was, of course, um, heavily satirized and, and that kind of thing. So it was, uh, you know, I consider myself a liberal, but that was pretty much making fun of Obama, which <laughs> went the other way as the other short film. So I'll, I'll send it to you if you want to check it out. But um, that did not get as much any clicks as the, uh, the one that pissed off the Republicans. So, uh, so w once you actually started, you know, uh, you know, making these short films, you know, making them for, you know, 50, 80, a hundred bucks, uh, you mentioned you, you made a, another film for a thousand, the feature film for a thousand, you know, uh, you know, so what was the, you know, the impetus there? You know, did you start with the budget or did you sort of write it and say, you know, Hey, look, it's only going to cost a thousand to make this. No, it actually, that one actually started as a short film and it was, um, the whole setup was was cheap to begin with. It was basically a mockumentary about a guy who, uh, you know, worked in an office and he thought that God had come to him and, uh, implored him to spread love and joy throughout the world. So it was this kind of found footage type of doc about this guy and his, you know, very jaded coworkers and, you know, kind of played off the tension between that. Uh, so he had kind of scenes of this person talking, which actually was played by myself. 
Um, and then scenes of things just going horribly wrong in the office as he tried to kind of impart this spiritual journey he was on. And um, we shot it actually at IFP using the equipment from IFP and, you know, some actually professional actors, believe it or not, from the area. They were willing to do it for, you know, pizza and Diet Coke. And um, it was literally like 800 bucks for an 83-minute feature film, um, which, again, I can send you if you want to. Watch it or link to your your podcast listeners. Um, and it actually played at some festivals and did did very well. Um, won an award and it was you know people either loved it or hated it, and those that loved it really loved it, and those that hated it really hated it. But it was um, it was really proving for me that I actually could make a feature film. And uh, until then, it was just kind of something that other people did. And you know, we started with the short film, and I just kept writing more and more pages along the lines of this the story. And before we knew it, we had forty or fifty. Minutes. I'm like, well, if it's going to be that long, let's make it a feature. And we just blew it out to a full arc of a film. Uh, I think it was 83 minutes in total and just did it on, you know, literally less than a thousand bucks. And, and, you know, w w once you actually were able to shoot this, you know, what, what locations w were you, were you like using? Did you use, you know, did you, I mean, do you ever, uh, while I'm, while I'm thinking of it, uh, I'll, I'll kind of shoot myself with another question. Do you yeah. ever, do you ever shoot at your office? I mean, obviously if you don't want to answer that, you don't have to, but if that's like the yeah. secret, uh, but. Um, no, we, not at my office, but we shot at, for our, both a couple scenes in Twin Cities and a couple scenes in, uh, 2021, my second feature, we shot at my wife's office, uh, which is uh, was Minnesota Public Radio. Um, so they they were very, um, you know, accommodating of that kind of endeavor, and they they let us shoot there for free, and it was great. So I, I we shot in an office just on mine for the last the last two features. So they they just basically do they ask you like anything like the the usual two questions are is there nudity and is there blood <laughs> uh, that that's and every time I've walked up to locations that yeah. is the two questions uh, is there violence like blood or is there nudity and and usually yeah. the answer is yes no <laughs> uh, there's actually a, a, a no on both those accounts for for us um, even so. better even better but they didn't ask so we could have done that I should have probably thrown that in there um, you know. I, so no, no nudity or violence, um, uh, but not because we couldn't. <laughs> it, it, it's usually when when uh, you, when you're asking those things, they, they do they ask you about insurance? They were just incredibly lax about the whole thing. No, they didn't ask about a shit. It was just kind of like we're going to come in on a Saturday and we're going to shoot from you know eight to five. And um, you know, my wife came with me because she works there and um, didn't really ask any questions. They were, they thought it was great. So I think that's, you got to really be careful you choose. I don't think my eCloud would have been that way where I work. So they were just like, Hey, just go ahead and do it. So got lucky. Very lucky, my friend. See, that's the thing, man. When you have a connect there and you're able to come in and professional and also, you know, you're still in an area where, hey, filmmaking is, you know, people haven't beat over the head with it like a sack of oranges. You're kind of like, hey, look, you know, it's still cool and neat. And, you know, Dave's wife works here uh, yeah. and, and this and that, you know, because because, you know, they always say in L.A. and New York, as soon as you have to film somewhere it becomes like a huge pain in the ass and they're like another thing was to, you know what I mean? And it just, it doesn't have that, that cool cachet anymore. So uh, Philly was kind of like that for a while. Now it's back up to be like, Hey, you're, you're doing something or awesome. I want to help you out. Uh, but, uh, but th 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 those are the things that for all the, all the listeners, I, I keep harping on about locations. It's, it's the blood gore, bl uh, the violence, the nudity. Uh, they sometimes ask about uh, uh, insurance. I mean, you can always sign waivers. And, right. uh, but, I mean, if you, they allow you just to be like, hey, look, you know, we trust you and you're not going to do anything crazy. You know, that, that you can't beat that. It's amazing. Yeah, that was actually probably the easiest location we had. I mean, we had some that were not, not easy. We shot um, a, a day at a hospital ER parking lot. And it was, I didn't have, <laughs> I don't know what to say this, I didn't have permission for it. Um, we got permission for everything else, but we were going to get it, but we needed this very key scene, which is actually the last scene in the film. And um, we shot uh, pretty much an entire day, and it was all an interior uh, of, of my SUV. And um, about halfway through, they, they came out with security, and they said, you know, what, what the fuck are you doing here, basically? <laughs> And I'm not sure what what words I strung together to get them to go away, but somehow I did it, and we just kept shooting. And um, 
it, you know, day turned to night and they finally came out with more security dudes and probably some firearms and, and such. And they're like, okay, whatever you're going to tell us, is not going to work. You need to get the hell out of here. And, um, fortunately we were done except for one shot. Um, so we went to a different parking lot where we could just do the exterior shot and, and patch together and work perfectly. But that was probably the most stress filled day of shooting I've ever had because you had, <laughs> Uh, you know, ER parking lot and kind of swarming security guards. And um, I knew we had, we probably couldn't shoot anywhere else and get the same kind of shot. And we had to have the, the scene to make the film work. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend that, but we did it. So <laughs> lesson learned. Well, you know, that that's amazing that you were able to get them to go away the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't recall what I said. Um, I probably pulled some, I don't know what I did to pull my butt. I couldn't, I could, could not tell you, but, um, they, I think they just scratched their heads and left and we just said, okay, let's keep shooting. And we powered through and, um, we've had, you know, I've had a few similar shoots like that where you're just really on a tight deadline, but they always know you're, you're, um, that you're supposed to be there. But this was one where we just said, fuck it, we're just going to do it. Um, even though we're not supposed to be there and, um, you know, it's in the film. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hope it works out. You, you, I mean, like literally, you guys just rolled up into that hospital parking lot and like, hey, let's shoot here. Yeah, they had. I had, I had scouted like I got to have be eight or nine other ER parking lots, and I wanted something that where we could. Uh, it's hard to describe. I wanted a certain shot, and I wanted to have like the emergency um, parking lot sign in the background and it, to make it all kind of come together. And it was the only parking lot I could find that worked. So I really wanted to. To shoot there, I I didn't think we'd have a shot in hell if we asked. So um, we just kind of just did it, you know. And that's guerrilla filmmaking, right? You got to just you just got to <laughs> go out there and do it, you know. Um, I, I imagine, and I'm just gonna just just food for thought, Dave. I'm gonna imagine that when they probably approached you, they probably said, uh, are, "Are you guys supposed to be here or something like that?" Yeah. And, you, and and you probably said, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're just finishing up and this and that." And they probably went away to go check because um, yeah, yeah. I've seen that happen before. Where they're like, oh, oh, are you guys supposed to be here? Yes. And then by the time they get back, you're either gone or they've forgotten or they don't care anymore they, to even pass it up the, the, the line. And and uh, but it seems like that time they actually did. <laughs> they actually yeah, came back. It was probably three or four hours later. That's the thing. I knew they, if they're going to go check. Um, I think it was kind of like, well, these guys will leave pretty soon anyway. Um, we'll let this one go. But then we're out there. You know, four or five hours later, they're probably like, okay, this is not cool. <laughs> um, so I'm not, I can't say I'm proud of that, but it turned out great. Um, you know, and that's, that's, that's the non Hollywood filmmaking right there. Yeah, it, it, it's the true indie film spirit, man, my friend. It, that, that's what that yeah. is. That's what you got to do. You got to <laughs> you got to steal locations at times. And that's, uh, you know, I, I one time was talking to Scott McMahon who runs Film Trooper. Uh, and I told him, I said, I think that's the number one problem for most filmmakers is getting locations. Um, yeah, and and I, th- I, I th- honestly, uh, I, I often said, you know, be a great idea. It, it could never work. But here's my idea, Dave. A, it's like a hub, kind of like Facebook. Right. Where you could friend another filmmaker and let's say, you know, you, you and I both lived in, let's just say, Boise, Idaho. Well, I have film connections and, and you know, uh, you have film connections. Well, we could sort of put up the put up on a, on a, on a poster or, or whatever. Hey, look, this is who I know at this hospital. Um, this is what they did. They let me shoot here. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, you wouldn't do it to your for your own house unless you were insane. But it, you know, if they if you want, they would let you shoot somewhere. And make me, hey, this is an abandoned house. This is how I got to shoot there. Uh, blah blah blah. And that's basically it. Almost become like this collage of sorts of city by city. Of right. all the places where you could where you could shoot and that are that are friend friendly to filmmakers. No, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's um, you know some of we got through the film war. They would post um, locations online, and um, you, you know, I'd call the film war and say, "Hey, look, that that's a film friendly place," and they would always say yes. But I, I love your idea. I mean, anything like that because it's very daunting when you start an indie film to not know where you can shoot it and. You know, when you don't have a lot of cash to give these guys to shoot, you're really just kind of begging, which I've done a lot of. Um, but the, you kind of just kind of learn how to what they want to hear. You know, like I said, insurance, we generally do get insurance and waivers, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and then you figure out, you know, 
uh, what what to say to get the location. And but every location I think I've had, even you know where we're supposed to be, <laughs> it's uh, it's super stressful because usually it's in my case it's been you know uh, a bar that opens at eleven for lunch, so you've got like four in the morning until eleven thirty, and then you got to get it in six pages or something, and. Every single location shoot I've been on, besides my wife's office, it's been that kind of pressure, and um, that's because it comes with the territory. I think you know that's again the non Hollywood filmmaking that um, you just somehow make it work, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I and I've been there before too, man. Where I I've showed up on a Saturday morning at like six or seven a.m. and uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, well we're going to open today at, at, at one or whatever," and you're like, "All right, well here we go. Uh, let's, right, right. let's get let's get rolling with this bad boy." And, yep. uh, so, I mean, and, and I've been there, man, where people don't show up, um, you know, uh, people show up late or ultra late. Yep. Um, I mean, I, you know, at some point I, I should just do a podcast, one episode where I just tell stories about all, all the, all the, the horror <laughs> stories I have. But I remember, I mean, some of these were where people would show up and not at all. And you're sitting yep. there calling them and they're like, Oh, I forgot today was the thing. And I'm like, well, I sent you 10,000 emails. How the hell did you forget yeah, yeah. this? <laughs> yeah. That's that is the the most uh, um, you can count on that more than anything else in any film. I guess somebody's not going to show up or show up late, and um, you know that that's that's a given. I mean, Twin Cities, uh, another kind of example of working around stuff. Um, I don't know if you've seen the film or not, but the lead character, the lead uh, character Emily, is played by Bethany Ford Binkley, and she's awesome. But she was actually um, had a, like a five month old kid when we were shooting. Um, so she sometimes had to bring her baby on set and it would usually have a nanny there for, her, but, uh, we'd be through, you know, halfway through a really intense scene that's going well and, we'd, and then the baby would start crying <laughs> <laughs> and that would be the end of that. Um, and, uh, those were a, a few shoots like that. So it was always something, it, it is always something when you're working on this kind of level of filmmaking and you just kind of have to not get frustrated and just, you know, uh, work around it somehow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's everything in the kitchen sink for every every um, every shoot that I've been on at this level. Yeah, you you mentioned Twin Cities, and uh, I wanted to ask you about that film now because that, that that's uh, you know I, I know you actually uh, debuted that film, and uh, you know it's been playing in a few festivals. So I wanted to ask you know uh, if you could just you know take us through the film, uh, you know give us a, a log line if you could. Yeah, so it's actually a, a sequel to Twenty Twenty One, my second feature film, but it's a very kind of spiritual sequel versus like a, a traditional sequel. But um, it picks up four years later with uh, these lead characters, John and Emily, and they're, they're married now. And um, the lead character, Emily, as I mentioned, she's actually um, pregnant, seven months pregnant with uh, their first kid. And um, that kind of sends the husband, John, into a tailspin. And, you know, things are really falling apart. And um, looks like it's all going to kind of turn to shit for for the couple and, and their lives. And uh, he gets this cancer diagnosis, which uh, shakes him out of his his downward spiral and sets him on kind of a new uh, course in life to you know make amends with his wife and to kind of find his God and go on this sort of spiritual journey to to find himself. And um, that's the basic side of the film. Um, there is about halfway through a, a very, uh, I would say extreme twist, which I generally don't give away in case folks want to see the film, but it really, um, from that point on becomes a much different kind of film in terms of, um, I wouldn't say a different kind of film, but the, the, the plot kind of turns on its head and it becomes a sort of a more reflective type of, uh, narrative structure. Um, that is really the reason why it's called twin cities. Besides the fact that I live here, it's, it's got a, um, a kind of dualistic narrative that, that plays out after this uh, very uh, jarring uh, twist to the to the plot, and um, it you know it kind of gets bananas from there at that point. So um, that, that's probably as much as I can tell you without spoiling the whole damn thing. But that's that's the basic setup of, of the film. And, and so you know, once you actually wrote the screenplay for this, uh, Dave, you know, how did you go about raising the funds to actually shoot this? Did you self finance this movie? Most of it, yeah. I mean, generally what I've done is um, I just put my – I get an annual bonus um, in my job and I you know, uh, I just put my bonus in it when I'm making a film. And I, I never really use my actual 
uh, paycheck <laughs> for filmmaking. So, um, you know, for this one, I used a couple bonuses and I used, um, I got a snow bait from the Minnesota film board They they paid for a good chunk of it, um, through their, their rebate program, which is really an incentive to, to film in Minnesota. And that was, that was very helpful as well. So when when you told your wife you wanted to make a, a a film with the bonus, did she just look at you? Did she think you were crazy, or or she used to it? Like, oh, okay, Dave, you know it's yeah. No, she's been great. I mean, she's got kind of her own artistic endeavors, so it kind of evens out. I won't go into that, but it kind of we both have this sort of side thing we do to our job. She's a, a HR director and has her own kind of career, but then she also does a lot of artistic uh, stuff on the side that. Um, balances out what I do. So we're, we're very accommodating with each other. Like, you know, Hey, I want to, you know, spend some cash on, on this thing that I really am passionate about. And it really wasn't very hard to sell. Uh, I did the same thing for my second film and she was around for that as well. So, um, it, I think it'd be different if I was saying, well, look, you know, we're going to have trouble maybe making mortgage now because I'm going to use my paycheck for this. Uh, the fact that it's really just my bonus, it's kind of like, well, it's found money anyway. And, you know, uh, Go for it. So she's been great, <laughs> honestly. Not kind of the opposite of what you might expect, but uh, she's been fantastic about the whole thing. Yeah, I, and and you know that that's good that that uh, you know she's supportive of this. Um, and, and so where people where can people find uh, uh, more about Twin Cities? Yeah, so the website is uh, just twincitiesthefilm dot com. Uh, we've got our trailer on there, a ton of stuff. Uh, you know, uh, clips from the film, synopsis, uh, a bunch of reviews. Uh, for the film, we've actually got, uh, I think, really great reviews for the film. So there's a lot of that on there. Um, cast and crew bios, you know, all the all the stuff you'd want on a, on a website more is, is on there. And I will link to that in the show notes, everyone, uh, at DaveBullis.com. Uh, but Dave, just in, just in closing, uh, you know, I wanted to ask, is there anything we didn't get a chance to talk about that you want to just say right now? Anything you want to discuss right now? Or, or maybe it's just something you want to say to put a period at the end of this whole conversation? Um, yeah, I guess, I, well, two things. I mean, first of all, what I'm working on now, I've been working on a, a TV series since we finished Twin Cities production about a year, year and a half ago. So that's kind of my next thing. So I'm, you know, you know, doing press for the film, but also kind of trying to, you know, generate some possible interest in, in this, uh, I think it's gonna be a nine episode first season series I'm working on that, um, hopefully we'll get some external financing for and not use my bonus for that. So, uh, that's the first thing is just kind of throwing that out there that that's sort of my next project and I'm, I'm really excited about it. Um, yeah, beyond that, I think, you know, I, um, you know, I think what's interesting about my story and probably the reason I have to be honest is because I've got this whole other life besides filmmaking. So, you know, I, I do try to encourage folks that, um, want to get into filmmaking, but think that they can't because they've got this, you know, very consuming day job or anything else in their life that think is, is not going to let it happen that, um, that's possible. And you really just need to start and just do it. Um, you know, rather than, you know, think about doing it or reading books about doing it and, and such, if you want to make good into filming, I would say, you know, start with a, a two minute film and whatever money you have for it. If it's a $10, 10 bucks you've got laying around, make a, a $10, two minute film. If you got a hundred bucks, make a hundred dollar film. But, um, you know, I would just encourage folks to, if they've always wanted to, to get into filmmaking, um, just do it. And, if you go to my website and you go to the contact page, I think that goes directly to my email. If you um, are interested in this kind of thing, you want to kind of know more about how I've, um, you know, been making this kind of life work with filmmaking and everything else, you know, definitely email me and I can help you out as much as I can. Um, but uh, that's that's the big thing I want to get across as well uh, to your audience is that, um, you know, try to encourage folks to, to get into filmmaking that maybe are not sure if they, they can or uh, have the the time to to do it. Yeah, just don't ask you for mentorships, right? Like, don't ask to to change. Well, can you meet somebody? <laughs> yeah, it was probably it was probably overly uh, you know whatever about that. But I, I I'm happy to impart whatever advice I have. Um, but yeah, I, I can't do a full time mentorship at this point, uh, unfortunately. But uh, maybe someday that'll be part of the the mix. But but right now it's not. Well, you you know it's it's like I say, Dave. When any anybody who listens to this podcast or what have you asks to meet me for coffee, uh, or asks to meet me meet, meet me for coffee or what have you, and or whatever, I always say this. I said it's pointless. Uh, if you shot me an email, it would it would 
do you 10 times the benefit than, than meeting me for coffee? Right. Because we both have to drive out there, got to find parking. Um, right. It's going to be crowded. It's going to be loud. Uh, and, and what, you know, if you, if you send an email, it's, you know, you could do it from anywhere. You could do it from on your way to work or whatever. And you get a lot more from it, you know, maybe not in the short, short run, but over the long run, if you just keep going back and forth, it, it's a lot, it's worth a lot more. Um, maybe even one email in general is worth a lot more because you could actually just detail things out. Uh, and then you also have a written transcription almost of what the meeting would have been. Um, I, I just have never, or the second part is, you know, just meet me at an, at a, an event, you know, if I'm ever at one of these events, um, the, the blacklist Philly, uh, I might end up going to one of their events. I'm not sure though. I, I haven't, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of network event out, Dave. I don't know if you are, <laughs> but I'm just yeah. like, I, people invite me all the time to these things and I'm like, you know what? I've done a ton of them when I, when I was just starting out and I got burned out of them real quick and I haven't been back since. Um, you know, it's just, I just sometimes feel it's a lot of, you know, I, I was one time part of a screenwriting group and every meeting we had a new batch of people come in. Right. So it was always like bringing people up to speed about what screenwriting is. And right. then it'd be like February. And then by the end of mid like mid middle of uh, summer, you're like, yeah, we've had 50, 60, 70 people come through here, but we, we have never gotten past like teaching the basics of screenwriting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, man. <laughs> so, you. Uh, so Dave, where, where can people find you out online? Yeah, I think the, the the best place to start is at uh, you know twincitiesthefilm dot com. Uh, I've put most everything I'm I'm on uh, working on uh, in terms of the film. I should say most everything from the film was on there. Um, I haven't done a website yet for the series I'm working on. That's going to come at some point. Um, you know, if you want to go to the website for my second film, uh, twenty twenty one, it's twenty twenty one the film dot com. Um, if you want to see that film, we actually got distribution for that film and it's on Amazon prime. Um, you know, they can see that for, for free. If you have Amazon prime, just go to 2021, uh, put that in search engine for Amazon. It should take you to the film. Um, we got distribution for twin cities as well. So that'll be on Amazon later this year. And hopefully, uh, a few other paper, uh, places, uh, besides Amazon. Um, so hopefully that'll be out there, you know, by fall, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, beyond that, you know, you know, if you want to shoot me an email, it's davidash7 at gmail.com. I'm uh, happy to, to you know, um, tell you whatever, whatever I know. Um, I'm happy to uh, to send that along as well. So um, that'll get you started. Uh, but again, if you go to twincitiesthefilm.com, I've got probably most of my stuff is is on on that page, that website. It's a, it's a pretty pretty stocked site at this point. Cool, and I will link to all that everybody in the show notes at davebullis.com. Twitter, it's at DB Podcast, or if you want to follow my personal one, it's at Dave underscore Bullis. Uh, cool. Dave, it's been so great having you on, man. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to checking out your, your stuff, man. Again, we, we have a very similar path. That's why I wanted to have you on. And, uh, again, best of luck to you, my friend, and I will talk to you very soon. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Dave. I really, really appreciate it. So thanks a lot. Find Dave at DaveBullis.com. Please make sure to subscribe and share the podcast.